Meet our general overseer and the house, the Lord will supply them. I'm going to pray that physically and spiritually the Lord will strengthen him. Pray, protect and provide all that he needs. We're going to pray that anywhere he goes with all the program that is lined up after this Easter crusade, that is program in Kano, that is program outside Nigeria, that is program all over the world. We are going to pray that the Lord will go ahead of him like a drawn sword. We break the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. I'm going to pray that God will pour grace upon his lips. More fresh oil, more anointing, more power of the Holy Ghost will be released and given unto him much more than he required to fulfill the vision and mandate. We're going to pray for all our leaders in Nigeria, especially spiritual leaders and all the temporal leaders. We're going to pray that all the people that are in authority in this nation, they will have the fear of God. They will have the direction of God. The Lord will deliver them from all territorial powers and evil kingdom that is trying to compete and contend with them. And the Lord will use them to move this nation forward. All the judicial officers, all the executive officers, all the legislative officers, the Lord will possess them, direct them, instruct them, and teach them in the way that they should go. And all the people that are in diaspora that is joining us, Lord, we pray that we also bring them into your divine program. Shall we begin to pray now? Our precious Father, we thank you for calling our pastor. Thank you for anointing. Thank you for making way for him to answer the call. We ask, oh God, are you the one that have started this good work in him? You will also finish it. Lord, we pray that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against him in judgment is thereby condemned. We pray that you, the one that have chosen him and ordained him, and he has gone forward to answer the call. Lord, we also sustain him. Preserve him, protect him, provide for him all that he needs to accomplish the threefold vision and the ten billion souls mandate. Father, we pray that you will walk upon him and do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to your power that worketh in us. Father, we pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that have been no room enough to receive it. The Bible says that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord himself and all the members of the household. We continue to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And Lord, you will be their shade and buckler. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against them in judgment is thereby condemned. Father, we ask for fresh anointing. We ask that your service maintain and walk upon our pastor and make him to be stronger and younger. As his days increase, let his strength increase also. My Father, we pray that wherever he goes, let the light of God shine upon his pathway and ensure his peace and safety. Thank you very, very much. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Precious Father, we are grateful to you for the answer to all our prayers. Thank you for the word that you have spoken to our pastor. And thank you for the grace to answer you. Lord, thank you for this calling. And thank you for all that has come as a result of calling our pastor. All the chosen all over the world. Father, we pray that only the mouth of the chosen people will be filled with praises unto you day and night in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that all the people that come in contact with you through our pastor, Lord, they will never go back the same. Lord, we are praying that in the ministration of today and all the days that is lined up for ministration, Lord, we pray that you go ahead of our pastor with your drone sword. You will break the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Father, we pray that you minister to all the needs of the people. All the people that are joining us today, that are on the way, you will hasten their steps. And as many as are here already, no one will go back the same way we came. We will go with maximum blessings as you have released to us today in Jesus' name. Every arrangement to steal or kill or destroy, we cancel them. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that the light of God shine upon our pathways and give us your peace. Let your presence and power compass us about like a shield. Thank you very, very much. We cover everyone here with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please have your seats. You are there. God of chosen has visited you. And you have an encounter with this great God. Remember. Our pastor will hear your testimony. This is the time for him to hear your testimony. Praise the Lord.
rise up quickly. Come to my right hand side by the pulpit area, may the testimony interview us so that you can share your testimony with the congregation and the congregation will begin to rejoice with you and praise the name of the Lord. You have testimony and you are looking at the pulpit. You are looking around you. Yes, you are the one we are talking about. Stand up now. Go and meet the testimony interviewers. They are waiting to take your name and give you opportunity to share your testimony. Praise the Lord. On the podium to minister to the congregation is the Lord's chosen choir. Let our choir minister now.
miracle is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessings from here today. You have prayed and gone so fast. His power in our midst and break every yoke in our lives. Miracles from above will come your way today in this place. Miracles from the Lord will be your portion. You can never ever go back the same way you came. Miracle is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessings from here today. Miracle from above will come your way today in this place. Miracle from the Lord will be your portion. You can never Go back the same way you came here. God of miracles is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessings from here today. God of miracles is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessings from here. God of miracle is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessings from here to Shall we clap unto God and appreciate him? The ministration of the choir says, Miracle from above will come your way today in this place. Miracle from the Lord will be your portion. You can never ever go back. That's the same way you came here. God of miracle is here to bless everyone. You must go home with your blessing from here today. So the point is, whatever challenge you have been facing, this is the time to tell God about it. Whether physical, spiritual, material, financial, any challenge you are facing, tell God about it now. And tell him that you are not going with that problem, but you are going with your solution. It is breakthrough and possess. 
And this is the fourth and final edition for this month. Tell God, in today's ministration, I'm not going to go back the same way I came. Close your eyes, bow down your heads, and tell God now. My Father, we look up to heaven, we pray that that which you have said concerning us, which is yea and amen, bring your word to pass in our lives. Your word says you will walk in us and dwell in us. Yes, you will be our God and we shall be your people. We are for come out from among them and be separate, say the Lord, and I will receive you and be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. We are having therefore these promises, dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves from every filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Yes, we pray, O oh Lord, perfect our holiness. Lord, help us to be focused on the things above, not on things of the earth. For except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But when it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Help us to die to the world, to die to the flesh, and to die to all the dictates of this world, and be alive unto you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me ask you, how many of you God has visited you in this place? Maybe in the last crusade, or in the last program we had, or in this just concluded crusade at the Navy town. God visited you. Can I see your hand up? God visited you. Can I see your hand up? See the way you are raising your hand on your lap. You are not sure. You are not sure whether God did something for you. Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, all these hands, God visited you. Are you sure? Are you sure you have something you can talk about? Eh? You are sure you have something you can talk about that God did for you? Praise the Lord. Oh yeah, come out. Share your testimony. Praise the Lord. Come out and share your testimony. Let God be glorified because he has done something for you. Or do you want me to share all the testimony from here? Praise the Lord. I remember one brother shared testimony here some few uh, couple of weeks ago. He said he was traveling and in that vehicle there was a terrible accident and the vehicle caught fire. And the angel of the chosen appeared to him and brought him out of the vehicle. And out of all the passengers, only him escaped from being burnt. All other passengers were burnt beyond recognition. But the angel of God came to where he was in that vehicle and brought him out. And that was how he escaped on hot because he declared when the accident happened, I am a choosing, I am a choosing, I am a choosing. And immediately, angel appeared and put hand and brought him out and put him outside while the other people were roasting inside fire. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same man also gave us testimony that when his son died, the son fell sick and died, and he shouted and declared himself a choosing. Where is the God of my pastor power? He said immediately the son came back to life. He's the same person that shared the testimony here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And do you know what now happened? When policemen came to the rescue where the accident took place, they asked him, are you sure you are one of these people that were burnt? He said, yes, he's one of them. So they said they should take him to a hospital that maybe he's not talking with full sense. When he got to the hospital, they now started undressing him. As they were removing his clothes to do some tests on his body, they now saw apron of the choosing inside his clothes. They say, oh, 
So you are a chosen, you are one of chosen people. He said, yes. They said, no wonder. No wonder you did not die. No wonder the fire did not do you anything. Clap your hands unto God of the chosen. Because he's a choosing, and because he was also wearing an apron, that was why the God of choosing intervened for him. Because our pastor has already spoken that no matter the situation, no matter the peril, choosing people will be exempted. And he said, choosing is Goshen. And you know, in Goshen, while there was darkness in Egypt, Goshen people were exempted from peril, from darkness. Praise the Lord. So, come quickly to my right hand side, meet the testimony interviewers, and let us take your testimony. Praise the Lord. With our beloved guests and invitees, we launch into the time when we hear the great and mighty things the God of Chosen has done in the midst of the chosen people. I'd like you to receive the testimonies of the Lord by clapping your hands unto Him. Clap your hands unto God of the Chosen the maker of all miracles, the one who walks in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure, the one who makes impossibility possible, who delivers the chosen at every point, wherever the need arises, is always out to deliver the chosen people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I still remember the testimony of that young brother. The testimony just came back to me now. Who was coming to Naivigi in the night? And as he was walking towards the church, between 10 and 11 p.m., all of a sudden, a vehicle stopped beside him. And two hefty men carried him and threw him inside the vehicle and was taking him away. And they were driving him. He was telling them, I'm a choosing. They, they used their hand and closed his mouth. They didn't want him to say anything. He was saying, I'm a choosing. I'm a choosing. I'm a choosing. They didn't allow him to talk. They were whisking him away. And they were running very fast. They also closed his eyes with a black cloth so he cannot see anywhere. But to his surprise and amazement, they got to a point and three soldiers appeared on the road and stopped the vehicle by force. And when the soldiers stopped the vehicle with guns, they pointed to the driver all of you, come out! Then those people came out and they left him inside. Now see what the soldier said. They said, what about the boy you kept inside? Bring him out. Now tell me, how does ordinary soldier know that a black jeep that is tinted has a boy inside? Praise the Lord. The soldiers told the kidnappers, what about the boy you kept inside? Bring him out. And the kidnappers were forced to bring out the young man out. And when they brought him out, they asked the boy, where are you going? He said, I'm going to Ijesha. Then immediately, a motorcycle appeared. The Okada rider appeared. And they put the brother on the Okada and told him, Take him straight to Ijesha. And that was how they rescued the boy from kidnappers. Or maybe ritualists. <laughs> Clap your hands unto God of the chosen. Amen. If he did not declare, I am a chosen, even though they were closing his mouth, nothing would have happened. But he continued to declare, even though they were closing his mouth. And that declaration released three angels to stop the vehicle automatically. And they removed the boy from a black jeep that was tinted. I'm sure he should be a ritualist. And they commanded the driver and the people inside. What about the boy you kept inside? Bring him out. Brethren, the point is as a choosing. You are overprotected. Don't allow anything in this world to deceive you or to remove you from here. Because if they succeed, then they have done the worst that they can do to anybody. Praise the Lord. 
Do you still remember the testimony of Golden Road? Who, if you remember the testimony of Golden Road, can I see your hand up? Ah, only few people. Only a few people remember the testimony of Golden Road. Okay, let me share it with you. Praise the Lord. Our brother came up and shared a testimony with us. He said he had a destructive affliction that lasted for 30 years. And when he came to Ingbidi 2024, Gio mentioned the case. And immediately Gio mentioned the case and prayed. That affliction stopped. 30 years affliction. Praise the Lord. And this brother said, in 2017, he was facing challenges. He wanted to leave choosing. Listen, you know, he wanted to leave choosing. He was facing a lot of trials and a lot of challenges. And then he wrote two churches, which in his own estimation are also good churches. And he was presenting it to God. He was praying. He was saying, God, show me which one I should go. He was praying and fasting. After praying for a long time, God did not show him anything. No sign, nothing, no revelation, no dream, no, no direction. Because when you are already in the right place, why should God show you something else? Praise the Lord. So he now decided, since God did not show him anything, he will decide one of the churches to go. So a night before the day he wanted to go to another church, he now had this revelation. He saw himself on a golden road, walking. As he was walking on a golden road, everywhere gold, Jesus appeared on that golden road. And as Jesus appeared, he looked at him. This is the Lord Jesus? And he said, yes. He now asked Jesus, am I on the way to heaven? Jesus said, if you continue on this golden road, you will eventually get to heaven. Then he now asked, if I'm on the way to heaven, why am I facing all these challenges? And the Lord Jesus answered him, I know about it. And anybody that will make it to heaven must face trials and temptations. Overcome them and get to heaven. But if you don't want to remain on this golden road, forget about getting to heaven. Do you get the point now? If you remove yourself from this golden road, forget about getting to heaven. Do you remember it now? That's the testimony of the golden road. When he woke up, he didn't need any other person to tell him that the lost chosen is the golden road. Say it after me. The lost chosen. Say the lost chosen is the golden road. And I must abide on this golden road and make heaven at last. Did you say it well? Say it again. The lost chosen is the golden road and I must abide on this golden road and make it to heaven in Jesus name Amen I can't forget that testimony Praise the Lord Amen Brethren, the God of chosen is so great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me share one more testimony that happened to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to share it at the Navy town, but when I look at time, I say, ah, I can't share the testimony because I didn't take permission from my geo. And this is time for him to come to people. That's why I didn't share it. 
Praise the Lord. But now that we are having opportunity, let me share it. Praise the Lord. Some few years ago, our Geo sent me to go and represent him in the inauguration of a governor, a state governor. Praise the Lord. And I went to the stadium where he was doing the inauguration. And the stadium was filled to capacity. And I couldn't get to where the governor will see me. Or I will see him and convey the message from our geo to him. But I was wearing my apron. Praise the Lord. The governor was on a mobile vehicle on the field of the stadium. And he was moving around. You know, waving hands at everybody in the stadium. All of a sudden, when he sighted my apron, he turned the vehicle and started coming to my direction where I was standing. Praise the Lord. He came right there to where I was standing and stopped the vehicle and pointed to me and said, you are from my pastor. You are from the chosen pastor. I said, yes. He stretched his hand. And I had to move forward and shake his hand in the midst of the crowd. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then he now asked me, how, how, how did I come? I said, my geo said, I should come and represent him and greet you and congratulate you. He said, I'm very grateful. Praise the Lord. And that was how the whole crowd turned and started looking at us on the stadium in the state. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Clap your hands unto God of the choosing. When you are a choosing and you wear your apron, you are distinguished. And at that moment, you must remember that you are representing our general overseer anywhere you are and you are wearing the apron. You are doing what? You are representing our general overseer as anywhere you are and you are wearing the apron. So, you one, you must make sure that the apron you are wearing is not faded so you don't misrepresent him. You must make sure that you are wearing a current apron. You must make sure that you comport yourself properly well so that you don't become a bad representation. Praise the Lord. Let's clap unto God and appreciate him. Now, let's have testifiers come and share their own testimonies. Praise the Lord. Our testifier, tell us your name, your address, that is your location. Just mention your location. You can mention the first time you came in contact with the chosen. And then all the blessings that God of chosen have showered on you. The first testifier. Choose it, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My names are Obaro Ashe. I worship with Ago, you see, branch. Okwavo area of Ogu State. I joined the Lord Shoes in the year 2004. My testimony goes like this. Uh, God had, I mean, my testimony is how God healed me of a particular illness. When I mounted a shoe design bus somewhere within the community where we have our branch, the, the first place that the illness was mysterious. I don't, I don't even know, know any the name of that illness. I all my body, all my body from the neck to my back was like there was it's like some, it's like when you pour hot water on somebody and the body is burnt with hot water, it was like that. And when they told me, and somebody said you take vitamin E, and I took vitamin E, it didn't work. But the event was here, I was wondering whether medical doctors would have answer to the problem. I was confused. But do you see that 
Our branch at Agon Yusuf, they had a signboard very close to the church, but there's no signboard in the main town. So, and I got, one time when I put a banner on that spot, I got a sign that I did put a signboard here. So I planted the signboard. The day I mounted the signboard, what was surprising to me that before I got home, not even when I got to I waited, before I got home, the whole thing was out of my body. My, my skin was normal. Everything was out of your body. Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, I was normal. Everything was normal. I was surprised. I told my son that, ah, look at my skin. It was not that I even waited until the next day. I was surprised. And that confirmed that, yeah, God really approved me. The same word I pray, I praise the Lord. Should we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Clap uh, your hands unto God of the chosen. Uh, and uh, I want to, my prayer for the Lord Shuzi is heaven at last for all Shuzi worldwide. Amen. And uh, for as you all, I want to say that the God that called him, we use it to transform the whole world in Jesus' name. Amen. I cover my testimony with the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. For how long did you suffer from that particular sickness? If I may ask. For how long did you suffer from that sickness? Just face the camera. Yes, okay. How long did you suffer from that oh, sickness? Okay, that, it, the illness was about one month. One month. For about one month, yes. And you said it is from your neck to your waist. Yeah, from my neck to my back and part of my tummy. And the thing was bringing out water. Yes, after that signboard, it, I received private healing. After mounting the signboard of the Lord's chosen. Yes. You didn't go for any prayer. Yes, I didn't go to prayer. I didn't even wait till the following day. That's why I was what people surprised me most. That same day. That same day. On the spot. That same day the healing took place. Yeah, the same day. And you didn't see it till today. Yeah, up to today, Father, I didn't see any sign again. Shall we clap unto God and appreciate Him? This is wonderful. This reminded me the testimony of one sister that was afflicted, went to hospital, did everything she could do. Nothing was working until she had a dream. And God told her to go and clean the fans in the new site. And she went and got a ladder with affliction. Got a ladder and two rags. Herself and one other sister. They started cleaning the fan one by one. One by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. One by one. As they were cleaning the fans, by the time they finished, the affliction that she has carried to hospital, that she has taken a lot of drugs that did not go, the affliction was rolled away. This is exactly what has happened. Choosing is the right place to be. Just for mounting the signboard of the choosing, to advertise the choosing, to make people to know about choosing, the affliction in his life that has lasted for over one month was rolled away. Now this program that is coming Saturday and Sunday, you have an opportunity to advertise it between today and Friday and bring people to that program and then forget about your affliction, forget about your trials, forget about your pains, forget about disappointment and frustration and lack. All of them will be rolled away. So today, as soon as we finish, don't wait. Jump inside the vehicle for publicity and go and advertise the program. Get ready. Your blessings, miracles, testimony will soon be rolling out in Jesus' name. Let's clap unto God and appreciate him. Clap unto God of the chosen. It pays to be a chosen. The next testifier. Amen. Amen. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chosen praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Ibere Ozemoya. I came to the Lord's choosing in 2024. And by the special grace of God. Did you say 2024? 2004, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. All right. And by the special grace of God, since then, I've never looked back. I've been a choosing. Clap your hands unto God of the choosing. I want 
want to thank God first of all for his protection, his provision, for his guidance and all that he has been doing for me a lot. But today I'm here to thank God for healing he gave to me. Sometime late last year, there was a kind of dislocation on my left side of my leg. And if I'm walking, it's as if my leg will pull out. But I kept going on like that, believing God that whichever way it came, it will also go the same way. And sometimes this is, that's about three months it lasted. Sometime this year, I think in February or so, our daddy on a Tuesday service like this, our daddy mentioned exactly the way that matter it was on my leg. And since that Tuesday to today, I've never experienced that dislocation. Power! <laughs> Clap your hands unto God of the chosen. Thank you, Lord. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I give God the glory. Again, I want to thank God. My second testimony is thanking God for financial favor, which he granted me through the word of our, his servants, our daddy G-O, our G-O. Choosing praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On a Thursday service like that, no, no, about three weeks or so ago, our daddy was just praying and praying and declaring, you know, a uh, lot, a financial alert. He was, in fact, oh my God. That day, we just came out from this. I have not even left this compound. I had men on my phone, and I thought it was one of those messages MTN will send to you. You know, I ignored it. But later I said, okay, let me see what was it. Behold, it was financial alert. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chosen, praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And for all this and more, I am here this morning to thank this God of choosing for his love upon my life. I want to thank him for the salvation that he granted unto my soul. That's the best I've ever gotten since my entire life. That's genuine salvation. Mm. I want to give him all the glory. Thank you, Lord. And thank him for keeping me since 2000 and 2004 till now. And I pray that as we continue to the end of my life, by his grace, I will continue to follow him. Amen. And when I go by his special grace, I will see God at last in heaven. Amen. And all of us, I pray that all of us will also see God at last in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Because truly, I, I know that all of us too would want to see this great God that has been doing these great things for us through his servants. Amen. So I pray for all. Everyone, heaven at last in Jesus' name. For our daddy in the Lord, sorry, for our G.O., our pastor, I pray that God will continue to keep him. Every second of the day, every minute of the, of the week, every, every day of the week and every week of the month and every month of the year, that this God, who may serve with all his heart, will continue to keep him and his entire family in Jesus' name. Amen. I so pray that they were waiting God as a testimony that I am confident that he will do for us. He will do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap unto God and appreciate him. <laughs> Brethren, let me ask you. You that you have testimony and you are still sitting down. Do you want Gio to come to pulpit before you, you will come and share your testimony? You want Gio to come and say, if you have testimony, come out. Then that time you will now come out. That is a distraction. You become a distraction to the ministration. You have testimony and we have asked you to go and share it and you are still sitting down. 
if Gio comes to Pupit now and say, you have testimony, come out, and you come out, you become a distraction to him. It means you are not following. Praise the Lord. Don't be a distraction. Follow now. Let him hear your testimony now. Amen. I give you just two minutes to go to testimony interviewers now. Let me take this announcement before I take this last testifier. Chair department members are having their monthly vigil today by 10 p.m. prompt at their usual venue. New members are welcome. The special intercessors will be having a day program on Thursday, 28 March 2024, immediately after the service at Hall 100 First Act End, New Auditorium. To ensure orderliness, control, and compliance, no commercial activities within the church premises during the crusade, God's covenant of peace and blessings program shall be permitted. Only a place allocated to sell food and soft drinks shall be allowed. Please meet Crusade Business Committee at the monitoring department office to obtain approval and guidelines. Sign Crusade Business Committee. This to remind all the branch follow-up leaders and their team members of the vigil on Thursday, 28 March, 11 p.m. prompt, venue car park beside First Auditorium. Prayer is an activator to do the work of God effectively. New members are welcome. Please inform others. Coordinator, follow up, please. There is a community network registration going on at the Jubilee Hall 2. There is a network provider of a mobile line that you will use 1,000 Naira and buy it. And then once you recharge it with 500 Naira, you make free calls throughout the month. It's going on at Jubilee Hall 2. You go and get the line. All leaders, workers, and members are expected to join hands with evangelists for a forthcoming program titled God's Covenant of Peace and Blessings Publicity Today, immediately after this morning service, tomorrow by 9 a.m., Thursday, immediately after service, and Friday by 9 a.m. Meeting point. Evangelist camp along Chosen Hospital Road. All evangelists that are worshiping at our headquarters church are having their vigil tonight by 10 p.m. at the evangelist camp. All the Jesha Group Zone Four Sisters are hereby reminded of their monthly meeting on Thursday, 28th of March. Venue is number five, will be us our street. Time is 4 p.m. God bless you as you come. There will be security vigil on Thursday, 28th of March, 10 p.m., and the testimony stand, all security personnel, which includes members of the armed forces, police, paramilitary, and retired officers expected to be in the vigil. Absenteeism will not be tolerated. Signed, National CSO. The last testifier for this morning session. Yes, go ahead. Choosing praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Sister Chigoze Chikwemelie. I live in number 11, Azan Street, Ilasamaja. I joined Choosing in 2006. And I want to appreciate God this morning. You want to sing? Yes, sir. Say it now. I remember, I remember what he has done. Oh, Jesus is merciful. I remember, I remember what he has done. God of choosing, Jesus is merciful. Amen. Amen. Honestly, I remember what this God has done for me. This morning, I say, let me share it with my brethren. Amen. Years back, while we are going from workers meeting, on our way, our vehicle broke down on the road. 
So while we are waiting for mechanic to come and fix it, so I was busy pressing my phone because it's late then, around something eight to nine. While I was busy pressing my phone inside the vehicle, without knowing that uh, such thing is happening in that area, before I know it, a young man shook her at the inside the vehicle and snatched the phone from my hand. So I thought it's a joke. By the time I look up, thinking that somebody is playing with me, <laughs> I saw one huge tall man running with my phone. I say, uh-uh, hey, is it that uh, they have stole my phone? So I don't know what to do, whether to shout, whether to come down. And the sister with me that helped me with her vehicle said I should not come down, that it's night. So he paid me. And I sat down in the vehicle. I said, God of choosing. I don't even supposed to come to workers' meeting today because I'm, I'm strong. But because I love you. That's why I, I come, I manage myself to come. Why this thing now? I lost this phone. You just give me, just favor me with this phone. While I was saying this thing, I didn't know that I'm even making prayer. God just had me. Before five minutes or ten minutes, if I'm not mistaken, I saw a group of men in that hold up beating somebody coming. So when they come to our vehicle, they say, Madam, they don't know the actual person. They say, Madam, is it this person that snatched your phone? Uh -uh. I looked, it's not the young man. I said, no, it's not this person. They say, are you sure? I said, it's not this person. I saw the man when he was running. So I know how he dressed. It's not this young man. So that is how, immediately I said that and they, they leave the young man. The young man was thanking me, saying, this is how people die in Lagos. I said, sorry. Thank God I, knew, I saw the person running. So, before I could last back, waiting, we are still waiting for the mechanic. Another, the same group, beat another person. I see if we, I didn't, if I remember what God have done that, year, that day, eh? they beat another man to our vehicle the second time and asked the same question. Madam, is it this person? When I look, is the man. I say, yes, is the man. The man was denying, but they are, those group, I don't, I don't really, till now I'm still thinking about it. They are just listening to my own voice. So when I say it's the man, and true true is the man, the young man say, no, have you seen me? If I say it's you, I saw you when you are running. So while I say it's the man, they continue beating him. Beat him until he shook hand in his body and bring out that phone. Clap your hands unto God of the choosing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Choosing praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is how they handed my phone to me. How they beat the man. They continued beating the man and left. Till we left that place. Nobody returned to say, Auntie, it's oh, so this and that. And then I could not record it. It's later I begin to think what God has done. I say, which people? I did not shout. How did they know that? Oh, I want to thank this God. Clap your hands this on the God of the choosing. God of choosing. The God that do what, what no man can do. The God that cares for his people. Yes. The God that washes over all the choosing ones. Mm. The God that takes care of us. May his name be praised forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for my beloved daddy, who the Lord will be using to minister grace and joy to us. I pray that joy and grace and anointing will never depart from him in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for long life and sound health Amen. for my entire household in Jesus' name. Amen. For the choosing ones, I pray that heaven will be our portion at the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Choosing praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, where did it happen? Where did it happen? Which spot was your vehicle? This uh, agri uh, towards Vos, Barras. You are going towards barracks. Yes. Your vehicle was in a holdup or it was already parked? We are in the holdup, but before you know it, because the person that helped me with her vehicle, she's Elena. Okay. So the, the vehicle breaks down and she doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Then she starts calling mechanics. And God of chosen intervened for you. Yes. Without you shouting, he came and recovered the phone and brought the person. Yes. And made sure he vomited the phone from his body. Yes, he put hand in his body and brought the phone out. Yes, sir. Shall we clap unto God and appreciate him? Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. Once you are choosing, everything will work together for good for you. Without even crying, without even shouting, God of choosing can recover your property for you. This is where we draw the curtain on testimony. Let's bow down our heads, bow down our heads, close our eyes, and begin to appreciate God for all the testimonies that we have had, and begin to pray for our pastor. Hallelujah. 
Praise your goodness. I praise your power. I praise you for all the signs and wonders and miracles from the inception of this church to this moment. I praise you for what you are said to do today. May your name be glorified. That the you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. As many that step into this place, I decree, I decree that the expectations be granted. Everything the enemy, the devil, the demons, may have done over the years in their lives to block their ways, to hinder them from making progress, from getting into marriage, promotion, employment, from being saved and making heaven. I break that yoke. <laughs> Young woman that delay in marriage, I cancel it, I decree from now to next month you are entering, you are going to receive a news. Yeah. And you that have terrible waste pain, I cancel it be here. Yeah. And you that your family, everybody is complaining, affliction, trouble, this, that. Today I cancel the evil. And I pray this night you will receive intervention. Yeah. I mean, clear court revelation that your expectation is granted. Yeah. Can I hear you say amen? Yeah. Now, all those demonic dreams somebody is having, Holy Ghost. Wherever that thing is coming from, wherever the e dreams are coming from, by the authority, the name of Jesus, I destroy that place. <laughs> and whatsoever they projected in life of somebody here, whatever they projected gave you in the dream world, I approve that evil. And you have been hearing voices. You have been hearing voices. Today I paralyze that power. I command that voice to cease. And wherever they are dragging you down, they don't hear my voice. I say, dragging you dragging you backward dragging you now I command the hands to break <laughs> somebody here somebody sir, boosting and boosting he will do you this he will do that he will do that my friend listen to me that person will do nothing I silence that voice and I cancel all the projection, manipulation, every bewitchment against you. I revoke it. I return it back to sender in Jesus' name. Who can fight with the Lord? Who? In the name of Jesus Christ whom I serve with all my heart 
from today I pray victory for you <laughs> Holy Ghost somebody here I don't know the power fighting you but as I'm standing here now you will receive your deliverance now or now <laughs> Holy Ghost Lord give the person deliverance I'm waiting for you I don't know the kingdom fighting you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus who I serve for a fight back give the person victory in Jesus name I want to assure you you will never go by the same whether you like it whether you believe me or not I release authority from heaven and I cut off any power hindering you from believing me and I command freedom for you in the name of Jesus you python kingdom you serpentine kingdom you python kingdom you snake kingdom you snake kingdom I catch fire catch fire Lord, wherever that kingdom is attacking somebody, attacking, attacking the church, attacking somebody here, in the name of Jesus, I command the python kingdom to die. Let that kingdom be destroyed in Jesus' name. Now I command that woman, that python, you must come out of your life, not tomorrow. Now, now. You serpent. You python. Oh, yeah. Die. Holy Ghost, bring that person out. Bring that person. Deliver that woman. I'm waiting for you. I command that python. Die now. Die. Quickly. Die. Catch fire. Die. Enter fire. Enter fire. I paralyze every action of the wicked. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. You spirit husband. Spirit husband. Your marine spirit. I bind you. I bind your power. I cast diabetes in Jesus' name. I cancel that diabetes. I command it to be healed in Jesus' name. And I command that terrible cough and you getting weaker and weaker let your immune system be renewed let the cough be cancelled let the strength come upon you in jesus name daddy daddy bless me these people every opposition and barriers in their way from having breakthrough oh lord i break that barriers that opposition I command to be removed. That as I speak your word, I request your angels to go to everywhere, wherever that attacking them, walking against them, destroy the place. Give them victory. Lord, give them breakthroughs. Bless them beyond the expectations in Jesus' name. Spirit of backwardness. The Lord rebuke you. Even the God that I serve will rebuke you. Backwardness. Backwardness. Kahuri. <laughs> yes, Holy Ghost. This is your work, it's not my work. That terrible projection of retrogression against the church against anybody holy ghost deal with that power in the name of jesus i can't sue backwardness for the church i can't sue backwardness for you 
I command promotion progress for the church for you in Jesus name if you believe it say amen by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ whom I serve I connect all of you to favor to breakthrough intervention miracles favors Lord intervene in Jesus name I decree that no one that step into this place shall go back the same bless them beyond the expectations in Jesus name can I hear you say amen shall we get seated turn your Bible to the book of First Chronicle chapter 11 from verse 16. First Chronicles chapter 11. I read from verse 16. And it reads chapter 11 and from verse 16. And David was then in the hold, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one will give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, that is at the gate. And the three break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was at the gate and took it and brought it to David and David would not drink of it but poured it out to the Lord and said my God forbid it me that I should do this thing shall I drink the blood of this man uh, put their lives in jeopardy. For in the jeopardy of their lives, they brought it, therefore, he will not drink it. These things did these three mightest. In First Chronicles chapter 6, let's look at First Corinthians rather, chapter 16, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 16, I read verse 9. Look at your Bible, First Corinthians chapter 16, reading verse 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. From these chapters and verses, I'm bringing to you the team, breakthrough, and possess part four breakthrough and possess verse part four as we come to the conclusion of this theme we believe as many who listening to the previous messages must have started to record breakthroughs in different areas of their lives breakthrough in every area of your life is the determination of God. He has determined total breakthrough. And that is exactly what I'm looking into today. Total breakthrough in every area of your lives. If you look at the book of uh, Exodus chapter 10, I read verse 8. Exodus chapter 10 from verse 8 and it reads and Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh and he said unto them go serve the Lord your God but who are they that shall go verse 9 and Moses said, We will go with our young. 
and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our hearts where we go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord if you look at the demand of Moses Moses was saying I'm going with everything I have none of them shall be left at the hand of the enemy none of them shall remain in Egypt none of them shall remain in the land of bondage I'm going with all around me I'm going with also my finance I'm going with my cattle to offer unto the Lord if you look at the book of John chapter 8 verse 36 John chapter 8 verse 36 and I read chapter 8 and verse 36 If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The promise of the Lord to us, the church, if the Son therefore shall make us free, we shall be totally free. God Almighty will not set you free, and then you become have freedom. That is not from Him. He wants you to be totally free from every yoke of bondage from sin from sickness from poverty from affliction from trouble he wants to set you once you come to him total freedom that is the promise of the lord no matter how many years your door may have been closed and the enemies have stood against it and bragging come and have your breakthrough come and possess a possession let me see I want to assure you the Lord will give you total breakthrough whether your enemy likes it or not the reason is he is God has no rivalry, has no equal. No man and no woman can oppose him, no kingdom, no spirit. He is the father of all spirits, and unto him every knee shall bow. When he steps into any project, he has all the resources to finish it. When he begins any project, he has what it takes to finish it. And I'm assuring you that it's here today, God will give you total breakthrough in every area of your life and no power no man no kingdom no spirit can hinder him because with him all things are possible if there is anybody human being or spirit anything wishing or fighting to oppose god is just that god allowed that thing for you know advertisement of his power by the time god would have dealt with that thing People shall know God and know that God has no rivalry. Therefore, God will finish the work. I don't know what they're looking for. Look at the Bible. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 3, I read verse 12. And it reads, chapter 3, verse 12. <clears throat> In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. Look at the letter stanza. When I begin, I will also make an end. When I begin, God is saying, when I start anything, I will finish it. Any project, anything I begin, I will finish it. Nothing can stop it. When I begin, I will make an end. He see you. God will finish the work. In the book of Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 9, I read verse 28. Romans chapter 9 and verse 28. 
and it reads, verse 28, Romans chapter 9, verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. He said what? I will finish the work. You see, you, I don't know what God has started in your life. He will finish it. If you will have confidence in him, and in fact, if we continue with him, if you continue with him, the Lord will definitely finish the work. So, as you keep on coming to this church, I'm assuring you, heaven at last shall be your portion in Jesus' name. He has given you salvation, and if you have not, he will give you, if maybe you have not received salvation, he will give it to you today. And he will give you sanctification, he will perfect you and qualify you for rapture. At the end of this life, you will make heaven at last. In fact, believers, the Lord said, I will build my church. What happened? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you keep on coming and hearing the word of God, the Lord will finish the work and you will surely make heaven at last in Jesus' name. He said, I will finish in John chapter 5, verse 17. John's Gospel, chapter 5. I read verse 17. And it reads, please look at your Bible. This is the divine constitution. This is the word of God. Whatever you read here is final of all final. And whatever God said, he will do it. In the book of John chapter 5 verse 17, it says, But Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. In your situation, God is at work to this moment. And I'm assuring you, nothing can hinder him. My father walketh hitherto. What did Jesus say? I walk. God is at work. Jesus is at work. Holy Ghost is at work. Who can hinder him? Answer me. He see you. God will give you breakthrough. He will give you your possessions. He will crush anything that is on your way. Any opposition, any barrier, God will deal with them. And give you that which belongs to you, you shall possess your possessions. In Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah 43, I read from verse 10. Isaiah 43 and from verse 10. And it reads, from verse 10, ye are my witnesses, say the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, I have saved, and have showed, when there was no strange God among you, therefore ye are my witnesses, say the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is no that can deliver out of my hand. I will walk, and who shall let it? Who? Devil, demon, human agent, witches and wizard. He said, I will walk. Nothing can revise it, nothing can hinder it. And I'm assuring you, so long you have made yourself available for the Lord to work on you, nothing can hinder him. He will give you hard desires. He will deliver you. He will save you. He will qualify you for heaven in Jesus' name. I say God will give you breakthrough. 
you will surely possess your possessions in Jesus name so get ready to have your total breakthrough as we go to the Lord in prayers at the end of this message honestly God will give you total breakthrough in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 the apostle here gave assurance to his audience in chapter 4 verse 19 he said but my God shall supply how many please answer me all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus my friend the man get that was given up assurance said I have all I am bound that was Paul the apostle he said I have all I am bound and he said but my God shall supply all your needs is speaking from the knowledge of experience, personal experience. He said, I have all, I am abound. And then he said, But my God is see you, is see you, is see you. My God shall supply all your needs. Don't ask me why. I am speaking from experience. And I can tell you, like Paul the Apostle, I have all, I am bound. Somebody can be saying, Why are you talking like this? I have Jesus. If any man has Jesus in your life, you have all things. Uh, like maybe some of you are looking at me and see, Am I a television? Are you still seeing clear? If any man has Jesus, he has what? That is it. He see you today. My assurance is that. Jesus will follow you home. We had a program at a Navy town. That was on Saturday. And then yesterday, some of those never personal came to say they want to appreciate my coming to their place. Praise the Lord. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What are you clapping? Is it appreciation? They say they want to appreciate it. And then while they were talking, they said, a particular woman came from a living church, from a holiness church, and told them that Jesus appeared to her in the night. She doesn't even know that we're having crusade. Jesus appeared to her in the night and said that he's going to that never crusade last night, before the crusade, and then that he's going to that crusade. And that was how the woman came to that program because Jesus said, told her I'm going there praise the Lord I'm giving you the testimony of the naval officials the chaplain those that came to see me yesterday for appreciation of the crusade they said look at a wonderful what they had a woman came and told them that the Lord Jesus met her at night and said, I'm going to that crusade. Praise the Lord. I want to let you know Jesus is here. Your expectation is here. Your breakthrough is here. You will surely possess your possessions in Jesus' name. But my God, <laughs> but my God how many need I want to show you something here that this man was speaking from experience and he says something again in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 21 please look at your Bible 1st Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 21 and I read He says, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. How many? Why? Look at that place. Look at that place. Look at it again. It says, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or things, praise. 
or death or things present or things to come all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's all things belong to you because you belong to who I'm not hearing you again all things are yours because you belong to who now is he not telling you if you have Jesus you have what all things Therefore, get ready for a breakthrough. Can I hear you say amen to that? So, for more understanding, we shall consider this message under the influence of headings. One, total breakthrough and examples. Two, application and the benefit. Let's go to point number one. The total breakthrough and the, the examples. Over the period, you may have been having breakthrough in one particular area of your life and close doors in other areas. That's not the promise of God. Are you hearing me? I say that is not the promise of God for you. He has promised to set you free completely. Am I right? He has promised to finish the work. Am I right? The work is started. To give you all things. Am I right? All these promises. Is there anyone that's incomplete? I'm asking you a question. So, he see you. It must be total breakthrough. How many of you believe it? So, be rest assured that he will, he will give you all things and bring you to an expected end. Where is the expected end? I'm asking you a question. Where is the expected end? So, do you believe God will give it to you? <laughs> Are you sure? Let us confirm whether there is anywhere that something like that is. Now, if you look at this place, in Luke chapter 12, let's see, let's see, verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. And I read, verse 32, look at the Bible. And he said, Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flocks, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you all. That is the plan of God for you, to give you the kingdom. So, don't be, listen to me, I don't know, some of you may be, uh, will you make heaven, will you make heaven? Are you afraid? Don't be afraid. It is the plan of God for you, to give you the kingdom. What it is to obey God, and to do the totality of the will of God. Look at John chapter 14, verse 1. John chapter 14. God will give you an expected end. John 14, verse 1. And I read, look at your Bible. 14, verse 1. And it says, look at it very well. And I read, chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. It were not so. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, that you may be also. So, I want you to be rest assured. God's plan for you is to give you what? I I'm not hearing you. By the special grace of God, as many of you who are here and are watching me all over the world, as we continue to follow him, we shall end up in heaven at last. Because he will give it to us in Jesus' name. So take note of that. That promise must be fulfilled. God has also promised to provide all your needs. And give you his kingdom at the end of this life as I see. Remember, when he opens a door, no man can close it. 
Is it possible anybody to close the door that God has opened? Any, is it possible? He said, if the Son therefore shall make you free, what happened? According to John chapter 8, verse 36. Romans chapter 9, verse 20, he said, he will finish the work. And in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, he said, I know the thought I think towards you, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you what? The expected end. And in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, he said, But my God shall supply all your needs. Every promise that God is making to us is all, all, complete. Nothing like half, you know, freedom or half uh, uh, promises. No, everything is all, all, from A to Z. And when God has promised, nothing can oppose it. Nobody can close it. Nobody can, nobody can stop it. If you remember, in First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, he said, for a great door, an infection is open unto me. A great door, an infection is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. My friend, listen to me. Enemies may be there trying to, you know, um, trying to oppose you. But they cannot stand in the way of God because he said, I will finish the work. So, I don't know what you are passing through and you are not limiting God you are not saying well you are not sure whether God will do it I want to put it to you straightforward God will do it Amen. what God cannot do does not exist when they were making noise of coronavirus and blocking everywhere do you know what I was asking them do you know what I was asking them they say that time they show some number of people that were healed as after they contacted it. And they said it is incurable. I was asking now, if it is incurable, and then about four point something million people was healed as at that time. That means it's God that healed them now. Because with God, nothing shall be what? Impossible. And the, if you understand, they were showing a number of people that were hit, at least and that. But they are saying it is incurable, it cannot be cured. But I told you here that every prayer I made on that matter, was it granted? All the people that have it, just one, one, one sentence, the person will get free and be healed. Because with God, all things are possible. And so I'm assuring you, total breakthrough shall be your portion, whether you like it or not. Because with him, all things are possible. So today, God will attend to us in every area of our lives and give us total breakthrough, spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically, whatever you are looking for, God will give it to you. He has done it before. He did it for Abraham. I say God did it for who? He gave him all things. He did it for Isaac. He did it for Jacob. And I want to let you know, he has done it for the apostles of old. He did it for the prophets of old. He gave Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Messiah, our Redeemer, all things. Praise the Lord. And I'm assuring you, He will do the same for you today in Jesus' name. He will give you how many things? All things. I want to even ask you a question. What do you think the Lord told us to come and receive from Him? What kind of a thing? In Luke chapter 14, verse 17, let's find out what that place said. Luke chapter 14, verse 17. That place said, Come, all things are now ready. How many things? So, which means invitation is to come and take how many things? All things. Praise the Lord. People of God, children of God. The Bible said, my people 
are destroyed for lack of knowledge. According to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, my people are poor, are sick, are fleeted, limited because of what? Lack of knowledge. That's what I'm suffering. But do you know that you don't even need to struggle like unbelievers for you to get the blessings of God? Do you know that the blessings of God is a gift? Please, I'm asking you a question. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to miss fellowship. You don't need to miss fellowship with God. You don't have to get a taste of this world. It is a gift. Do you struggle to get a gift? No. So, I want to let you know that God Almighty will give you your heart desires from A to Z. Because his promise to me and to you is all things. Total freedom. I don't know what you are looking for. God will give you hard desires. I am very, very sure. Is it possible? Now look at the example in the book of Genesis 24 verse 1. Let's see something there. This man is the father of faith. His name is called Abraham. Let us find out how did God bless him with the half breakthrough, with the total breakthrough, where the God gave him a few small things and made him poor and then take him to paradise. Let's find out. In Genesis 24, verse 1, Genesis 24, and verse 1, please open your Bible. Let's read it. So you can attest to the fact that the scripture is truth and that it is written. Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Oh, I read Genesis 24, verse 1. And Abraham was old and the way stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Please answer me. All things, is it half thing? All things, is it uh, incomplete breakthrough? He was old, very old, and God had blessed him in all things. Let me ask you this question Can God lie? Human beings, I'm asking you, can God lie? Can the scripture lie? God bless him in all things. Why? Because God has made a promise and he, he walked with God by faith. As God is bidding you to walk with God by faith, and if you walk with God by faith, he will give you all things. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, those that do know their God shall be strong and do as well. That means they shall possess their position. Let me ask you this question. Did Abraham make the paradise of God? Let's put it like this. Do you think Abraham made the heaven? Even though we have not entered heaven, even though they are still in paradise of God till the final judgment. When everybody will now enter, the, uh, those who are children of God will enter into his kingdom. Abraham is still in the bosom of who? God. But was he a poor man? Was he a beggar? I'm not hearing you again. So Abraham was very rich. Abraham was blessed with children, blessed with cattle, with blessed with servants. About 300 trained servants in his house. Abraham had all things. And the Bible tells us today that all of us are children of who? So, children of Abraham by faith. Am I right? And then children of Abraham by uh, uh, um, in poverty. You see you as I bless you today. Heaven will stand by it. You will possess your possession. You will be totally free. In fact, sickness is not your portion. Limitation is not yours. 
Chosen people. Oh. Jesus looked at Jerusalem and wept. That's what the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Jesus looked at Jerusalem and began to weep. Why was he weeping? He says, because you don't know the time of your visitation. If you know what belongs to you, even now, you would have, you would have taken advantage. I mean, but he said, because you don't know the time. Look at how you are suffering. And yet, all the promise of God from Genesis to Revelation belongs to you. Oh my God. People of God. My prayers here are not in vain. I don't know how to pray West prayers. Every prayer I make here, God whom I serve will bring it to pass. You don't believe it? Whether we are many or small, or, or, or yes, whether we are few people here today, God will still answer prayers. Whether we are very many, God will answer prayers. Whether it's by telephone, whether you are far hearing me, God will answer prayers. That is the God I serve. Praise the Lord. On Saturday, when we were at that never base, I don't know whether you had testimonies. I don't know, I don't know. You had testimonies. Even a left-hand commander was bearing witness of the people that were, he was treating of uh, uh, some, some airmen. I don't know the name of the airmen. What, what's the name again? Cancer of the bone. And then they gave testimony to the fact that they were healed instantly. And the, the, the lady, the woman was bearing testimony. And that place, there are many people that there, am I right? And then on Sunday, we went to Shomulu to, to dedicate their church. There are not so many, because that's just a brand, a brand church. There were just few people. And as it happened in Neva Crusade, uh, um, village or base uh, crusade. So also, at that small crusade, we said, ah, all those who are deaf and not open their mouth, I'm here to speak. Instantly, a late, hold on, oh, hold on, let me talk, oh, so that I can release you on time. Praise the Lord. Instantly, a lady of 18 years, born deaf and not, began to speak very well. Praise the Lord. As it happened in that Nava crusade, where we have multitude, also where we have few people. You see, miracles happen everywhere. As long as Jesus is there. But the Bible said he went about doing good. And he did all that were praise on the devil. And so the lady started speaking. All those who are, are three years, two years, affliction, all of them began to be free, giving testimonies. That was yesterday, uh, Sunday. Today, he has not changed. He see you, you will give testimony. If testimony is an abomination in your country, or in your village, or your house, today you will have breakthrough of testimony. Because you are in the presence of the Lord. And in his presence, he is made like what? Wax. You are here, will be met today. The mountain will be shake today. It will collapse in the presence of God in Jesus' name. So, Abraham was blessed in all things. What about the apostles? In Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Mark chapter 10. I read verse 28 and it reads chapter 10 and verse 28 then Peter began to say unto him look we have left all I have followed thee and Jesus answered and said verily I son to you there is no man that left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels but starting but he shall receive what? 
that is all things. Hundred fold. And he said, Now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. And in the world to come, what? He promised us heaven. He give you all things and give you heaven at last. Do you know, you need to remind God his promises. Do you know you need to pray in line with what God said? Do you know that if you go to court, now listen to me very well, if you go to court, your argument will not base, or for you to win argument, will not base on, uh, well, I am right. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know why he cheated me. I don't know what happened. You, your lawyer must cite constitutions, section so, 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 section so, so, so. And uh, the other person will also cite constitution, so, section so, so, so. And also will refer, look at how this thing was done in section so, so, so. Pastor, the judge will be noting down, noting down. And your judgment will deliver based on the constitution, on what the constitution say on that matter. The Bible is divine constitution. Any argument you are making here, heaven is taking note. Heaven is taking note. And if that argument is a fact concerning your need, God will give it to you. Now, let me remind you something. If you go to the contest, temptation of Jesus, that was no talking of this or talking of that. Jesus said, it is written. Satan said what? It is written. Jesus said what? It is written. Satan said, it is written. And then when Jesus quoted it, Satan saw that I have no balance again. And he knew that Jesus knows the, the read Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 10. You see where argument was based. It is what? Written. Now, when you are praying, tell God what is written concerning you. If you're a human being, something has been written concerning you. He see you today. It is written. And my God shall supply all your need. It is written. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It is written. Come unto me. All you that level and heavy land, and I will give you rest. It is written, Come, for all things are now ready. Give me what is ready. You see, you, you will go home a strong Christian. Nobody can shake you. Are you hearing me? Here is a place of truth, not a place of candle and water. The Bible says, he said, you shall have candle and water and incense and be free. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Somebody say amen to that. He see you hundredfold. Uh, if, you, if you're only looking for one, send the remaining 99 to me. I'll add them to the one I have. And then give, give that it is to some people. If you choose your limitations, that is not for God. It's not from God at all, at all. You can cross over. You can have breakthrough. You can possess your possessions. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, let's read. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. And I read. Chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy ladder. And I will give you all rest. Can you see it? Come unto me. Even before Jesus said, Come unto me, he said in verse 27, look at verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my father. How many things? God gave you how many things? God gave Abraham how many things? God gave the apostles how many things? Then God will give you one thing. God forbid. That you will take one thing up. And you say, eh, why I'm here today is, God, don't heal me, I'm okay. I heal you, 
You remain poor. You're okay. He, you, no child. You're okay. He, you, no, no husband, no wife. You're okay. How are you okay? He, you, no money to pay house rent. You're okay. You're not okay. God will heal you and give you all things. Then you can provoke people to serve God. Otherwise, you go to heal you and you move on the main road here. And you stand up and say, give me money for transport. They say, ah, you say God, God bless you. God heals you. So God is not able to give you money. My friend, God, sit down. I don't know whether I hear what I'm saying. That after God, I heal you now. He said, what I need, Pastor? Pastor, what I just need today is just let God heal me. I'm okay, I'm okay. Eh? And then God heal you. And then you start to move out of the road. No, no cup of your pocket. You said to me, please, hold down. Can you take me uh, to Ochedi? Or sometimes you squeeze yourself into Danfo. I enter there and sit down and say, say, bring my money, bring money. He said, I don't have money. And then you are wearing apron. Or you have been sharing to them, God bless you in the church. He said, something's wrong with you. If, if you don't pay the money, <laughs> we'll, we'll deal with you. So the best thing is, let God give you what? So that you have money to pay. You have money to take care of yourself. Also, you have sound head. You have whatever you need so that you will be a blessing and not a cause. Not what people, people look at you and begin to mock God. God forbid. Do you know what the psalmist said? Why should the heathen ask me, where is my God? Praise the Lord. So let me begin to rush the message now. All I want to let you know is breakthrough and possess. And that in all in all things, every area, you possess your possessions. If you look at Psalm 34, verse 6, Psalm 34, I read verse 6. Look at it. Psalm chapter 34, and verse 3, verse 8, rather. Psalm 34, verse 8. And I read that 4, verse 8. No, no, that for verse 6. This poor man cried, the Lord had him, and saved him out of what? How many trouble? All his. You know, sometimes when people are poor, there may be a lot of trouble. That poverty is associated with a lot of trouble. And when God was about to deliver him, did he just deliver him from one trouble? All his trouble is set him totally free. You too will be totally free. In John chapter 7, verse 23, John Gospel chapter 7, verse 23, and I read John 7, 23, and he says, Look at your Bible. He says, If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision that the law of Moses should not be broken. Are ye angry at me? Because I have made a man what? Every week hole on a Sabbath day. I set the man completely free. See why I'm angry? The work of God is perfect work. It's complete. It doesn't do a half job. Therefore, he see you today, total breakthrough, complete freedom. God will give all your needs. You will never go home as a beggar. Do you know, Lazarus was a poor man. And he went to look for food at a rich man's table. And the dog of the rich man began to lick the wound of Lazarus. Eventually, Lazarus died and went to paradise of God. Am I right? I don't know. Lazarus died and went to where? Paradise of God. Now, Lazarus, a poor man, and suffered, and 
torment of dog died and went to paradise in the bosom of Abraham. Abraham was rich, had all things, and also was kept in paradise. So, poor man can go to heaven. Rich man. I didn't hear you again. A man that has all things and goes away. Abraham has all things and is in the bosom of God. Lazarus was poor, suffered to the point that dog, dog helped him to die quick. And he still went to the bosom of Abraham. So choose one now. How do you want to go? Choose one now. So nobody wants to go like you. <laughs> Remember, my name is Lazarus. Who? Praise the Lord. Well, I'm not like that Lazarus who, 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 does, who had less knowledge to possess what belongs to him. I have understanding to take what belongs to me. And I will take all this and heaven at last. Can somebody say amen? amen. So, let nobody say, eh, I'm not that one. Are you hearing me? I am Lazarus, the friend of Jesus. Are you hearing me? I am Lazarus, of course. Lazarus, that Lazarus went to heaven. Friend of Jesus went to heaven. Lazarus will always go to heaven. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I have not seen a last one where they say that the last one went to heaven. I have not seen that one. All of them went to heaven. And therefore, my own last rose, by the grace of God, I will make heaven at last. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Three mighty men went and had breakthrough. And drew water and gave to David. David said, I cannot drink. Oh, this, if I, this water you are giving me is your blood. Because you stake your blood in order to give me this water. But the issue is that these three men had what? Breakthrough. And they gave him water. Now look at it. In first uh, Chronicles chapter 11, I read from verse 16. Again, look at it. Look at it very well. Verse 16, and David was then in the hood, and the Philistines' garrison was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one will give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. And the three, and the three did what? The three did what? Break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to, the, to David. But David would not drink of it, but pour it out to the Lord and said, My God forbid it me that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? In jeopardy for, for with the jeopardy of their lives, they brought it Therefore, he will not drink it. These things did these three mighties. The point is, these three mighty men stake their life, their blood, and had breakthrough and gave him water. He see today, Jesus has taken his blood and his life that he might recover what Adam has taken away through disobedience to God. He lost everything. But Jesus has paid the price. You will not pay the price. I will not pay the price. Because the price of Jesus is an authentic one. And it's the greatest. No one is above it. So, I can't pay the price that Jesus paid in order to give me access to God. Where I'm connected to all things. I will drink the water. David, David said, I will not drink. Me. I will drink the water. Some of you are looking at me somehow. David was giving water by men who risked their life. He said he will not drink. He said it's their blood. Jesus paid the price. He shed his blood for me. 
I will drink the water. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. Okay, you not drink the water because Jesus shed his blood. Eh? Okay, okay. Me, today. I drank it before, I'll drink again. Blessing all the way. Everybody here must receive blessing. Whether you like it or not. Do you know for me and for you? The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, a great door and effectual is open on top, but there are many adversaries, enemies everywhere. They don't want you to have your breakthrough. But thank God for Jesus. He will give us breakthrough. He has given it to us, and the today as we call upon him, we shall be blessed in all things in Jesus' name. So, have you seen that God gave the people of old total breakthrough in all things? We should not delay in getting our breakthrough. That in every area we must not delay. I must go straight away at the end of this message and possess my possession. In Numbers chapter 13, I read verse 30. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. And it reads, And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to. Other people say, We saw giants, sons of Anas, and said, Who can stand them? But Caleb said, Let us go at once and possess it, for we are well able. He see you at the end of this message. Don't delay anymore. Let us go at once and have our breakthrough and possess our possessions. Something happened. You know, I read an account of Moses. Moses said, I will go with everything we have. Pharaoh said, No way. You can't go with it all. You, you are young you and old may go, but leave your cattle. Moses said, I will go with my cattle because I must have something to, to sacrifice to God. I can never go without my money to serve God in poverty. He said, I will go with everything. Let's find out what happened. Chapter, Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12. I read from verse 32. Exodus chapter 12. Look at the Bible. Some people like poverty. They said they will suffer and suffer. My friend, listening to me, that is not the promise of God to you. The Bible said Jesus Christ was made poor that you might be rich. You might be rich. Riches of Christ expand to every area spiritually, physically, materially, financially, and otherwise. He see you. Riches of Christ shall be your portion. In chapter 12, I read chapter 12 of Exodus. And from verse 30. Let's read from verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. And said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel. And go, serve the Lord as you have said. Say, go with all the children. You are, go away with all of you. And look at verse 12. He said, as you have said. Verse 32. Also, 32. Also, take your flocks, your hearts, as you have said. And be gone and bless me also. This time around, he said, take everything, your cattle. Take all of their flocks. Take your riches. Go and serve God. Before he said, no way. That is why God multiplied the plagues. God you know, visited them with thunders, with lightning, with all kinds of plagues, so that he can release them and everything. But most, uh, Pharaoh would say, ah, you know, you can go, but not with this. You can go, but not with this. You can go, but Moses said, I must go with what? everything and at, at the end of it Pharaoh said go as you have said 
And not only that, I can see your faith. Bless me also. Bless me too. I can see you a conqueror. I can see you a champion. I can see you have defeated me by your faith. Therefore, not that you are going with everything. Also do what? Bless me. He see you today. If you can stand your faith, Satan will give up the fight. Are you hearing me? At a point in time, he will know that they cannot conquer you. He will go to look for other people. Already, the Bible says, Behold, I give unto you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemies and nothing about any means hurt you. Now, you have the power. And why should you be poor? Why should you allow the devil to defeat you? Why should you be managing? Why should you be sick? Why is that you don't have the grace that you needed to do the work of God? It's because of lack of knowledge. The grace is there. What is it that you, need, you, you know you lack? Maybe sometimes you say, um, uh, you, 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 uh, you uh, only the person born again in your, your family. Your wife is not born again. Or sometimes your husband is not born again. Your children are not born again. Your mother is not born again. Your father is not born again. And then he said, I'm going to heaven. You know, every day, look at my children. If you don't go and go, you know, all of you are going to heaven. You know, you know, if you look at your wife, I say, wife, you don't want to go, I'm going, you know. You look at your husband. You don't, you say, husband, he said, I'm, I'm going, you know. I, if you don't want to go, I'm going. And then you tell your children, you don't want to go to heaven. I'm going, you know. So, and then you don't have any cover. You are managing, you say, I'm going, you know. Whether money or no money, I'm going, you know. That is not the scripture. Do you hear what I said? The scripture is that God will serve you and your household. The scripture is, is that God will supply all your needs. So if you are going, your father is not served. You are not saved. You are not free. Your mother is not saved. Your children are not born again. And you don't have money. You say, I'm going, you know, I'm going to heaven. They say bye bye. If all of them wish you bye bye, go. Go. They would even tell you, go, go now. So, if you want to go, my mother, my father, my children, my children, children, all my relations, even our money, we are going to use it to serve God. We will not serve God in poverty. Uh -uh, some people are looking at me. Pastor, pastor, what are you saying? The Bible says it is hard for rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And therefore, why do you want to talk about going with your money? That's rich now. Very rich is, my friend, listen to me. With God, all things are possible. Are you hearing me? So, that is the argument of who? Moses said, I will go with all my, my wife, my, my children, my cattle, everything. And Pharaoh saw it. But he refused to go. And God stood by him, sending, you know, signs. Signs. He must leave them and everything. And they released, he released him and everything. I said, turn back and said, bless me also. Praise the Lord. He see you today. Your children must be saved. Your wife must be saved. Your mother, if he's still alive, must be. Don't leave them behind. Always bring them before God and say, they must be saved. Your uncle, don't wish them to die and go to hell. Your uncle must be saved. Are you hearing me? All the children, all of their relation must be what? Saved. Then you must have money to serve God. Okay, you don't need it. Some of you, if I mention it, you, okay, you, you need it. You will take it home. As I pray for you, you will test miracle. You know that some of you have not tested miracle. I know you will test miracle. Do you know what Jacob did? Jacob, when he was returning to his brother, whom 
the heart problem, whom he took the blessing. Jacob set everything aside and said, I'm going to pray to God this night, throughout the night, according to Genesis 32, verse 24. And then he prayed and prayed, and a man appeared, and he was wrestling with a man. And look and behold, he was wrestling with an angel of God. And then the angel, as he was wrestling till almost the dead, he said, let me go. The dead break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That is people who are serious in the things of God. Some people are not serious. If you say, let us pray. Some people are already finished prayer. If I say, let us close. You see, some people are at the gate. So we are closed to them. But for Jacob, I will not let you go unless you bless me. You must bless me. That's why, I, that's why you are here. And therefore, if you are not convinced after prayer that you have not gotten what you are looking for, other people will be rushing out. Stay here. Continue to pray until the angel releases you. God releases you. Are you hearing me? Let it not be. Let us pray. And you are at the door. And you have nothing. I will not let you go unless you bless me. So, he has blessed Abraham in all things. As we have seen in the book of Genesis 24 verse 1, he gave the Israelites the promised land. He will surely fulfill the promises he made to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, but my God shall supply how many? All your needs according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Just get ready. The Lord is here for you. Are you hearing me? To give you total breakthrough in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Jeremiah 32, and verse 27. Say, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is it too hard for me? Please answer me. Anything too hard for God to do, God will visit you. God will give you total breakthrough. It says in Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis 18 and verse 14. It says, Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? At a point in time, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Is there anything too hard for God to do? He see you, God will visit you. That which I had, which is a hard desires, today God will give it to you. He said in Isaiah 43 verse 13, I will walk and who shall let it? Who can hinder him? So get ready for a miracle. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Whatever he has done before, he's able to do it today. So get ready. As for breakthrough, whether spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically, as for what? Every area of your life, he will do it for you. I say the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. Remember in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Please open your Bible. It says, Ask, seek, knock, for everyone that asks, get today. What you ask here today, God will do it for you. In John chapter 14, verse 13. John 14 and verse 13. You shall, chapter 14. Verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will. Anything means what? Anything. If you shall ask anything according to his will, from A 
to say it shall be given to you so in this program today god is willing to give you what i didn't hear you all things total breakthrough in john chapter 16 and verse 24 john 16 verse 24 he that will have you asked nothing in my name as and you shall receive that thy joy may be full god wanted to have complete joy that you and your household will be saved that you are blessed financially and you will not be in want of anything you will not be a beggar that you will not be saved delivered one side another side you are suffering ask anything in my name i will do ask that your joy may be full who want to have fullness of joy today god will do it for you that your joy may be if somebody is not having all things it will be very difficult for your joy to be full so today is a day of breakthrough to possess all your possession in the book of isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 i read for three verse 19 behold i will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert he said to them wherever your blessings are hidden god will make a way for you to collect it even if it's over the red sea over the river jordan over the wall of Jericho, God will dry the red sea. God will dry the river Jordan. God will bring down the wall of Jericho that you might possess your possessions in Jesus' name. So He will give you breakthrough, and you shall possess all your possessions in Jesus' name. Finally, remember our program is at hand on saturday and sunday and that is easter program titled god's covenant of peace and blessings honestly if you have not entered that covenant come on saturday and sunday if you enter come and renew it and i'm assuring you whatsoever you are looking for long life peace prosperity all these things are valuable Blessings of God come Saturday and so a possibility shall be made possible. And when you are coming, don't come alone. Come with your household, your relations. Invite others, your neighbors. And in fact, give hand B. Move out at we finish now. Let's go for publicity. Invite others to come. Go to morning cry boss to boss evangelism market evangelism and everyone invite others to come and don't come late don't miss any day god is going to do wonders come saturday and sunday come fasting six to six and pray ceaselessly pray until that day every moment keep on praying for the success and what god will do for you remember that program has been you know from the inception of this church god has been doing wonders in easter program and i'm assuring you god will do wonders come saturday and sunday put on your apron to advertise the program if you have money you can put banners on the road or your car and make sure you send texts to people whatsapp invite them to come to the program you publish a facebook and tiktok everywhere make sure everybody must know what god is about to do and must honor that crusade so come saturday and sunday the lord will bless you the lord will visit you your life shall never be the same so finally all i want to assure you today is the day of what breakthrough and possess and you and me which are possess our possessions so for those who are not yet born again and those who are backsliders 
or compromisers, they should repent of their sins. They should confess their sins and promise God no more. They should believe that Jesus Christ died for them, shed his precious blood for them, for all the whole world. They should believe it and they should confess their sins and renounce them and promise God no more. They should invite Jesus Christ into their heart to be the Lord, their personal Savior. I'm assuring you, once you do that, your name shall be canceled in the book of death and be written in the book of life. And grace for righteousness will be given to you and power to live the Christian life will come upon you in Jesus' name. So, and uh, once you are born again, you should maintain righteousness. Because my Bible said in First John chapter 3, verse 8, let's see, a Christian is not a sinner, and a sinner is not a Christian. Please open your Bible. Let's read it. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, and he might destroy the works of the devil. The Bible said, a sinner is not a Christian. Verse 8, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God, doth not commit sin, for he still remained him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Verse 9 says, A sinner, a Christian, please, a Christian is not a sinner. Verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, a Christian is not a sin. The point now is it, what is sin? This sin, this sin, sin, what is sin? First John chapter 5, verse 17 says, All unrighteousness is sin. Anything that's not righteousness is sin. And may we know then? That may be your question. I want to let you know unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Anger is sin. Lying is sin. Pride is sin. Selfishness is sin. Contention. Bitterness. Keeping malice. Bearing grudge. Lusting after evil thing. Love of money. Love of the world. That terrible sin. Renounce them and promise love no more. Such a lie. Hatred. Anger. Envy. Unfaithfulness, insincerity. Confess and say, Lord, I'm sorry. But by it, murmuring, cursing people, swearing with heaven and it, worshiping idol, making idol, having an idol in your heart. All these things are terrible sin. Be sorry over them, acknowledge them, and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do them no more. I don't know the evil you are into. Listening to me, listening to me properly well. If you are among those people, like, you know, going to native doctors to make sure for divination, for any reason, going for, for palm reading, they will read your palms, or you consult the dead, or you read magical books, that is sin. Have nothing to do with them anymore. Now, listen to me. If you are in this place now and you discover that you are into secret court, whether local or international, any kind of court, whether village court, campus court, any kind of court is, is sin. Renounce them, gather the property, and burn them. All the pictures you took there, all the whatever, the staff, the coffin, the type of clothes you dress, born all of them, don't wear them anymore. Wear the white. The new modern is white. They're not wearing black again. Don't join them and mend your ways. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, listening to me, I don't know the wickedness I'm into. Occultism is a terrible sin. And if you're into stealing, you pick for it. You're among those people that break home of people and, you know, and carry their goods. 
Or maybe you are among those people who are into internet fraud, Yahoo Yahoo fraud, any kind of fraud, 419 fraud. Confess them and say, Lord, I am sorry. And make your way right. Do restitution. Return whatever I take it from people. If those things are with you, I mean your ways. And if you are into armed robbery, any kind of robbery, renounce them and promise God no more. And don't bring the money. You have defrauded people. You have stayed, you know, stolen from them. Don't bring the church. I want to give church money. I want to give them millions, billions. We don't need it. Return it to the owner. I mean, you are ways. The righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you are there, are you are into masturbation, you are into uh, homosexual or lesbianism, or you are committing adultery or fornication, these are gross wickedness. Repent and promise God no more. I mean, your ways. Maybe you are among those, them listening to me now. You are involved in the prostitution. You prostitute your body, private prostitution, public prostitution. My friend, I mean, your ways. That's wickedness, gross wickedness. Or you are patronizing the prostitute. That's wickedness. I mean, you are ways. Or maybe, listen to me, maybe you are among those people that what you do, you are into hired assassin, ritual killing, kidnapping and killing, banditry. These are gross wickedness against God, against humanity. And no murderer has inheritance in the kingdom of God. That means no murderer can enter the kingdom of God. Except you repent and stop it today. I mean, you are, if you have made your money in these ways, don't give us offering. Don't give us any money. We don't need it. I mean, you are wait. I don't know the evil you are into. All those that are fighting and quarreling, those that are beating their wife and disobedient to their husband, that is sin. All those that give bribe, take bribe, and stop money for people because of a uniform, because of a position, that is sin. Or maybe you are in two, you are among those that are fighting and quarreling. Or you are among those people that what you do, you are employed by somebody to work for, work for him or for her, for a company. And you start this stealing the money. Or you don't even do the work and you are collecting salary. That's gross wickedness. You help to bring down the company. At the same time, you're looking for salary. You must be faithful. Unfaithfulness is sin. You must do the work and ask to, you know, that you are paid for. You must make that into work so that your salary will be justified. Otherwise, you'll be living in sin and stealing. And if you don't pay those working for you, that is sin. If you are among those that are cheating those working for you, you cannot pay. You are living in sin. Repent to them and make up your mind. I will pay them and God will bless you. You see all these that take snobs, smoke cigarettes, in their hand, cocaine, heroin, are taking drugs. That's wickedness. You don't need to sell it. You don't need to buy it for anybody. You don't need to touch it. I don't need to walk wherever I'm actually those things. I mean, you are ways. And if you are selling them, don't give us a money. And if you are among those, listen to me. Those people that are taking alcoholic drinks, white wine, or blue to beer, hot drink, one percent to half percent, that is sin. And you are selling it, that is, repent to the I will do it no more. Don't touch it. I mean, your ways. Now is acceptable that tomorrow may be too late. I want to warn you, we are in the very last days. Very shortly now, 
the trumpet shall sound. And the people of God that are ready will go home by rapture. Those that are not ready, they will suffer and they may not make it again forever. Amen your ways. The trumpet is about to sound. Jesus is coming. Repent before it is too late. If you are among those that marry and divorce, or you enter polygamous marriage, you are second wife or third wife or fourth wife. You are living in adultery. You have no husband. And if a, a man that has three wives, four wives, or two wives, you are living in adultery. That's wickedness. You must do restitution before it is too late. Remove the second wife or third wife or fourth wife. Let them go home to their parents. And if you are a man, a woman, a second wife, don't pack your love, go. You have no husband. And if you are dead, listen to me. And uh, you are among those people that divorced your first husband, return back to him as long as you are a first wife. Or you are divorced the first wife, bring her back, remove that person in the house. I mean, you are wait before it is too much. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. I want to let you know this is the narrow way to heaven. This is not that broad way. Well, whatever you do, where all children of God are going to heaven. No, the Bible said, without holiness, no, I shall see the Lord. Look at the Bible in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. For those people, who are asking this marriage something? Is it so? Chapter 19, verse 4. Verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And then twins shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more twins but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Marriage is what? Between a man and a woman until they do all spots. And if you are there, listen very well. It's for your own good. Don't say, eh, if like this, I will not come again. No. If you want to make heaven, you'll come again and come again and come again on the rapture. Are you hearing me and listening to me now? If you're among those that paint your hands, paint your leg, paint your mouth, paint your eyes, paint your body, that is sin. Or you put extra finger, extra eye, extra nose, attachment and weaver. And palming and earrings and jewelry and bango. You make up your body. That is sin. Or you bleach your body and become yellow overnight. Or you're a young man that do Jericho, rough hair, scattered hair. You play the head like a woman. That is sin. Sometimes you can you put on cross on your neck. They be calling you bishop. And you know you're a thief. You know you're arm robber. You, you and your daughter, because you carry cross, you say, I got only man, bishop. And then he said, That is, you know, you are displacing your, you know, display your cross, and then you are looking for something there. Bishop, you will steal it, put it in your pocket. Bishop, stop deceiving people. Jesus is not on the cross again. Cross is a curse. You don't need cross to be a child of God. What in the cross is to believe that Jesus died for the cross of Calvary. That's all. Jesus is by faith. It's not by religious observances. Cross and rosary. You don't need those things. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. As I begin to round up, 
if you are among those that dress, expose your chest, your armpit, your tummy, your nakedness. A Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. Cover your body properly well. Amend your ways. As I begin to round up now, if you're a woman wearing uh, trousers, dressing like a man, with your cap and other things like a man, now listen to me now. That is wrong. That is abomination. And if you're a man wearing skirt and blouse, and sometimes you put your scarf, a man who, to worsen it, the abominable earring, you put it too. My friend, that is sin. Praise the Lord. Some people said, um, if the Lord chooses, they said like this, no, I, will not, I don't like that church. Yo. You don't like our church. But Jesus said, I'm going there. So you and Jesus, which one do I choose? Eh? Some people say, I don't like the Lord choosing them. If there is anywhere near that place, whatever they're doing, I like it, but you need this, this Lord choosing. I don't like it. Eh? Now, Jesus said to the woman, eh? I'm going there. I'm going to the Lord choosing. Then, you and Jesus, now, which one do I choose? So, <laughs> many are called, few are chosen. Praise the Lord. So, I want you to look at this place in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Look at this place. If you are wearing such garments, look at the Bible, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. And I will tell you something else after, as I read this place. Chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaining to a man. Now shall a man put on woman, woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Those that are wearing a man. Dressed like a woman is what? Abomination. A woman dressed like a man is what? Abomination. And now, it says, such that does this thing can never, I'll show you. They are abomination. And they can never enter heaven. But there is something you need to know. I read last week, I read in the, in the internet, I saw a, a lady that was that went to youth, youth club and they said you must wear trousers that you cannot wear and they subjected her to a lot of torture and probably say you must wear trousers you must dress like that he said i cannot wear i'm a christian and they went to court i saw it last week they went to court and then at the court the woman cited this scripture the lady said my bible said a woman shall not put that pertaining to a man, a man shall not, and as they took note of this, that was how judgment was delivered, and then awarded her five million naira, and they sent her to go and wear your skirt and blouse, because you cannot offend your God. They gave her five million naira. They awarded her five million naira. And told her, go back to to youth school where you are scared and black. Use the five million to treat and take care of yourself for the torture they gave you and all that you passed through. The, the lady went back as a big, big woman doing her youth school with five million. Imagine a millionaire who should have been looking for a job of hundred thousand. It's paid to do right. Somebody say amen to that. Whatever the Bible says, don't do, don't do it. Whatever the Bible says, do, do it. No matter the pain, you will get into the blessings of God. Can I hear you say amen to that? So look at the Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, and verse 8. But the fear for an unbeliever and abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in the lake which born with fire and bliss on which the second dead. You see it? Abominable people shall be cast into hell fire. So don't allow dressing to make you abominable. Unrighteous people, sinners, and refuse to repent, shall be cast into hell fire. 
But there is something you need to understand. Some people may ask, Pastor, why are you mentioning these things? The reason for the mentioning them one by one is Proverbs 28, verse 13. Say, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. If you don't know what you are doing is sin, you can't stop it. You can't repent. But when you know that dressing anyhow, smoking and drunkenness, now this is a sin. You will stop it and say, show me mercy. Don't forget, God has made a provision for the sins that are past. Whatever are done in time past, as I hear him now, if you can repent today, God will forgive you. In Exodus, Exodus 12 verse 13, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So, the blood is standing for cleansing of our sins that are past. But Exodus, the blood in Exodus was the blood of animal, a lamp without blemish, which was a symbol to the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. That one covers sin, but blood of Jesus washes away our sin. Look at the Bible in John chapter 1, verse 29, to see the actual blood. John chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. And say, Behold the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The lamp of God is who? What do his blood? What does he do? He take away our sin. Not covering. He washes it away and make you a new person. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, I gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood at the cross of Calvary, he said, It is finished. The end of all sacrifice for sin, he said, It is all over. And in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. I'm not aware. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If Jesus is aware, it means there are other ways. But he said, I am the way. No other way. And in John chapter 10, verse 10 b, he said, I come that they might have life. I have it more abundantly. If you receive Jesus, receive eternal life, abundance of life. And the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make us free, we shall be free indeed. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28, he said, Come to me. He didn't say, Come to also, come to Mary, Joseph, and Peter. Uh, and John, he said, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you all rest. Is the only way, is the only Messiah, is the only Redeemer. There is no co Messiah, no co mediator, nothing like it. Paul, no other mediator between God and man, only who? Jesus Christ. I don't know where I've but you don't have co mediator. Is only Jesus. Look, the Bible said he's at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. No other being. So he's a He's our savior. Jesus is the only savior. So as I round up now, do you know what? The Bible said in John chapter. Please look at the Bible. Let's see. Uh, let me let's read. I'm going to close. John chapter one verse twelve. John chapter one. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as receive who? They receive what power? Power of sonship. Power of adoption. What is it, Jesus? You have been adopted as a child of God. You have that power. You have that right. You cannot be saying, I am a child of God. And your life will change. Your life will become a new creature. Second Corinthians, please open your Bible. Chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. The old man is destroyed. And it's out. Devil and demons. His works is out. And then you receive Jesus Christ. The new man with his righteousness. And the devil and his evil deeds are taken away. Once Jesus is there, 
I want to let you, you will bear fruit of what? Righteousness. You will maintain righteousness. So, I want to let you know that as you receive Jesus today, you will receive eternal life. You will receive right of sonship. And that right gives you right to all breakthrough. Give you right to possess all your possession. Matthew chapter 6 verse 93 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this, how many? Eh? 50%. What of 60? What of 90? What of 99? So what do you see in reward? All this thing. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's put it like this. All these things shall be, you shall struggle to get them. Eh? How? Explain it. How is it? Which means you are not going to struggle for it. The father of the kingdom, the owner of the kingdom, will give you what? All things. He said in Luke chapter 15, verse 32, I said, Son, thou art ever with me. All I have is thine. He see you. Total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. You will possess all your possessions in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Rise up and begin to pray. Pray now. Amen. Your ways, your life to Jesus and possess our possessions. Everybody rise up and pray. Call upon the Lord with all your heart, with all your being. Everybody pray. Everybody. Today is the beginning of a new era in your life. You will possess your possessions from A to Z. Just repent. Just confess them. Just ask for mercy. Confess all your sins. Say, I'm sorry. I will do them no more. Show me mercy. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that is what I have come to know this day. Total freedom shall follow you. You must possess your possession. The Lord will give them to you. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. After this day, you will find the grace of God in your life. And all your blessings are given to you as a gift. Open your mouth and pray. Sickness shall not be your portion. Sin shall not be your portion. And sorrow shall not be your portion. Poverty shall not be your portion. You will have total freedom. Everybody pray. Everybody I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father, oh, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah, I am sorry. Oh, Lord. I want more time. Sorry, Lord. Lord of choosing, I am Oh, Lord. If you are truly sorry, raise your two hands up. I am praying for you. That person that has unforgiving heart, bitterness and anger, the order of the day. Tell God you are sorry, you will not do it again. That person that is into masturbation and the one into homosexual. Tell God you are sorry. 
the one into lesbianism, take God, you'll never try it again. And you that live in adultery, that is why you are suffering as for the mystery of God. That's why you, what you are looking for, you cannot get it. Adultery. You are living in fornication, visiting the prostitute. Say, God, I'm sorry. No more. That person is into fraud, into internet fraud, Yahoo fraud. 419, ask God for mercy. You that is still belonging to secret court, and you as an agent of Marie, ask God to forgive you. You renounce them today. You reject the Marine, ask for mercy, and stop tormenting your family. Amend your ways. I want to pray for you. You that is to steal it, stop it. Ask God to deliver you. Ask for mercy. The young man is into steal, into robbery, into killing. Ask for mercy. God will forgive you. Amen. Your ways. Stop smoking. Stop taking alcoholic drinks. Renounce them. Stop makeup. Amen. Your ways. Please keep your tongues up. Say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me and he was buried and on the top day he rose again for my justification almighty god use the blood of jesus christ watch my sins away from my heart i plead the blood of jesus from today i surrender to jesus i reject the devil i renounce all his evil jesus christ come into my heart be my lord be my personal savior cancel my name in the book of death write my name in the book of life give me power to sin no more in jesus name i pray keep your two hands up sing this song i surrender i surrender I surrender all to Jesus, blessed Savior. I surrender, I surrender again. I surrender, I surrender I surrender all to Jesus let say surrender now keep your hands up I pray for you heavenly father I come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I present my people before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them, in your heart, remember me. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by authority, I bring that yoke. From today, I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus. Cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more. In Jesus' name. All backsliders, restore them to faith. All believers, sanctify them. Circumcise their heart again. Uproot the root of sin. Make them pure. In Jesus' name. Can I hear you say amen? Bring down your hands. Just keep your offering up. I'm praying for you.
keep your offering up. Heavenly Father, we present our tithe and pledges and offering before you. It is written, give, and it shall be given unto you. As we give to you, sanctify our offering by the blood of Jesus. That in these hands who are lifted up, wherever we shall play this hand from today, wherever these ones are connected in any business, I command it to prosper. Bless them in Jesus' name. No man can give above you. As we give to you, open our ways. Give us beyond the expectations in Jesus' name. Thank you because it is done. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. All chants are coming in you. You are worthy, O oh Lord. I you are worthy to sit on the throne. The God of choosing, you are worthy to sit on the throne. Immortal Redeemer, you are worthy to sit on the throne. The God of choosing, you are worthy to sit on the throne. Our Messiah, you are worthy to sit on the throne. The God of heaven, you are what to sit on the throne. Choosing, I say, Oh, you are what the Lord. Oh, you are what the Lord. Oh, you are what the Lord. I find in heaven the God of Joseph. Ah, my father. Ah, my father. Ah, my father. I find in glory. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, you are what is it? You are what is it? You must die. Oh, you are what you love. You are what you love. Oh, what you what you love. The God of heaven, a miracle worker. It's a God of this, a lion of Judah. The great provider, he must have a demand. Oh, you are what you love. You are what you love. Oh, you are what you love. Oh, you are what you love. 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 And you are what you love. And you are what you love. Oh, what you what you love. Abba no mega. Abba Fada. Abba Fada. Abba Father, Abba the glory, Wadi, 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 you are what you love. You are what you love. Sing it. Wadi, 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 Wadi,
It is your turn for breakthrough. That is it. He has come, he has come to, to take the habit of your praises. <laughs> Worship him. He is worthy, he is worthy. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. 
You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. And you are worthy, Lord. Worthy, worthy, Lord. Oh, worthy, worthy, Lord. And worthy, worthy, Lord. The God of Jesus. The God of Jesus. The God of Jesus. I mean, I go walk out. The God of Jesus, the God of Jesus, the God of Jesus, the God of Jesus, a miracle worker, ancient of the days, and like I know you that. You are what you know, you are what you know, you are what you know, you are what you know. You are what you know, you are what you know, you are what you know, oh what you want you know, the God of heaven, miracle worker. Rejoice. It is a turn, your turn to have breakthrough. You are what you love. 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 I want you what you love. They got a favor. Miracle worker. Agent of the days. Lion of Judah. They got a favor. What you want you want you want you want you want you love. Ah, my father. What you been? You are what you know. 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 Oh, what you want you know. They got what you say, miracle worker. Turn to your seat and have your breakthrough now. Yes, you, you. You have entered into the book. So there, a book of record is open for you. And um, I will hear your testimony. Now, mention seven things. Be definite. Don't joke. Don't joke. Don't joke. Tell God, this is what I want you to do for me. Oh Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me for good. Oh Lord, remember me. Le Marakazin de Liko Pesu Kataya. Yeno Zen Jenica Peruskitena. Oh Lord, hear my voice in the name of Jesus. Rezu mana kasin denia. As I ask them to mention seven things, I bring my matters and matters of choice before you. Oh Lord, rezu bi kasin deni kopre. As a lumana kasin denia kopre. 
in Jesus name we oh, pray keep it up and pray for you somebody here you unite many times in the night this night you can never unite more than once I cancel that impediment somebody here AS I cancel it I decree S S for A A for you say amen to A A S S is not your portion now that means there is somebody with S S where are you I cancel S S for you I turn it to A S in Jesus name after my prayer I go and check go to wherever they tested you before now I want to pray for somebody a much poison in the name of Jesus I cause the poison come to be healed in Jesus name that person that cannot sleep what is that problem you say that people are sitting on your way that your business has run down that somebody is after you in the name of Jesus whom I serve receive victory yeah. now whoever that is standing on your way wherever he takes their case to to the air to the land to the sea to any court of law to any way he take your case to I declare victory for you victory for you Victory for you, victory for you, victory for you in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands up. All the closed business, your business that is not working, and even where they tie you down in the wrong business, and you, you cannot excel, I break the yoke for you. In the name of Jesus, I bring you out of that yoke. I cross you over. I command breakthrough all around in Jesus' name. That dream, that evil dream, dream, evil dream. And even somebody here, you totally still without seeing dead, dead people. I cancel those dreams. Spirit of dead, I bind you. I cast abyss in Jesus' name. And you want to travel, they block your way by visa that do this and say that today I command visa to be issued to you. <laughs> Let your way be open in Jesus' name. All of you that things closed, you don't cross a level. You are placed in perpetual limitation. In the name of Jesus, I cross you over. Yeah. I command breakthrough. I pray that all your possession, you possess them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let that person seeking for admission outside the country, let it be granted in Jesus' name. Yeah. That the, I cause that poison. Poison you ate in the dream. I command to come out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Daddy the heart problem i pray for brand new heart somebody i pray for brand new kidney i pray for brand new liver i pray for brand new brain pray for brand new womb lord i pray he this person in jesus name brand new kidney brand new kidney receive brand new kidney in jesus name my daddy let the cataract be cancelled. Let glaucoma be cancelled. That shortness of blood, let your blood be filled. That sleeplessness, I pray you sleep like a baby tonight. In Jesus' name, I cancel that fever, that fever, that malaria that refused to go. I cause it in Jesus' name. Typhoid, I cause that typhoid be uprooted in Jesus' name. The terrible cough terrible cough I cause it I want to be uprooted in Jesus name 
my daddy i pray for this person whatever they have done against you in that village and you are suffering the effect i command thunder to approve that thing. from today even as you are here i command you to be loosed my daddy it is a day to be remembered because when the children of Israel, when they cross over the wall of Jericho, that day has not been forgotten today. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom I serve, every barrier on your way, every hindrance is to break through. I command them to collapse. Let them be removed in Jesus' name. I cross you over. I cross you over. I cross you over. Amen. Begin to possess your possession in Jesus' name. Amen. Daddy, I cancel that HIV. I cancel that staphylococcus. I cancel coughing and blood. I cancel that cancer on the breast or the bone. Be healed in Jesus' name. That toilet infection be healed. That bleeding let it cease in Jesus' name. And you that cannot see your period, I lose you. I give you from now to three days, we don't see your period. My daddy, the person looking for a ba baby boy. You have baby girls and they are wondering, are you going to be without a baby boy? In the name of Jesus, I break the yoke. Any child that cross in your womb, even anyone that is there now they say is a baby girl i change them to baby boys father bless them in jesus name my daddy that missing person i command the person to be found let the best come back in jesus name daddy fight their battle give them victory whatever these people are trying to take from you violently i cancel that evil lord intervene in jesus name bless my people heal my people deliver my people all these ones though you are saved though you have been a christian but you have no money to do anything project you want to do in the name of jesus I break the yoke for you. I command breakthrough financially in Jesus' name. My daddy, these ones that are here today, expecting something, expecting that what you have been invested, you need the money to come out from it. Expecting that somebody will pay you money expecting big money daddy this my brethren now i passed a decree from now to this evening wherever they are watching me from now to this evening let them receive a lot let that money come in in jesus name my daddy bless my people deliver my people fight the battle this person that is caged the enemy caged you because of what the kind of glory that is upon your life the enemy caged you but today by the authority in the name of jesus i break the cage I release you. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Come out of that cage. I lose you. Lose. Scaluvia Carusian, Jenu Catena, Razende Nicopelus, and Jenny Copelus Kite, Rosandomia Cataya. Lord, show me a sign. Anywhere the 
cage you. I release you. I open the cage. I bring you out. 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 I call for promotion for you. Wherever you are walking and your promotion is delayed, the next promotion, your name must be there. Father, intervene in Jesus' name. Bless my people. Heal my people. Deliver my people. Fight for my people. That they, I decree testimonies for everyone. Say amen. Say it again. My daddy. I decree all of them watching me all over the world whatever request they have tendered in germany in america in london in south africa whatever request they have tendered that they in spain remember them for good <laughs> let the request be granted all over the world in jesus name all these pictures and these seven requests i declare it done bless everyone in jesus name now it's time to possess our possession did you ask for anything or oh, stretch your hand towards it do you believe in miracle let me ask you do you believe in miracle Daddy, I stand here by authority. I declare miracle of all their possessions. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Stretch your hand. Take it. What are you praying for? Take it. What do you pray for? Take it. Daddy, Daddy, the God that I serve. Oh Lord, as my brethren are claiming it, they are claiming whatever they ask, release it to them. Oh Lord, I claim whatever you are giving to me. Receive all glory, receive all honor, receive all worship, receive all adoration. Lord, give this person that child, that child you are asking for, receive that child, receive those children, receive that favor, receive that connection, receive that employment, receive that victory. Lord, bless them one by one in Jesus' name. Say amen three times. And it is amen in heaven. I will hear your testimonies. Do you believe God has given you breakthrough? Do you believe your possession, your possession? Come Thursday, I want to hear your testimony. Thursday, talking to you on the topic, the song of the Lord. That is the sword. That will take you through the covenant peace and blessing. The sword of the Lord. That sword will come out. And it will deal with all your enemies. Do you know you are blessed? You are covered with blood of Jesus. I will have your testimony on, on Thursday. May the good Lord bless all of you. I'm the God of Jesus and son. Pray up. Remember to go for publicity. Remember to go everywhere to invite people to a program on Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be a great day. You are covered with blood of Jesus. You are blessed in Jesus' name. I said, the God of Jesus, answer prayer. Oh, 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 Come on, 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 come on
They got a chosen as a prayer, don't mama, don't fear. They got a chosen as a prayer, don't mama, don't fear. They got a chosen as a prayer. Wow! What a great way to possess our possession. Breaking through. Now that you have got. We are. Invite everyone. Let them come and partake in what God of Chosen is distributing in the land of the Chosen Revival.